That's going to be our focus on the first half of the show. On the flip side, we'll deliberate on Nigeria's economy. Following the latest report by the Debt Management Office of Nigeria that reveals that the nation's total public debt has increased as at March 31st, 2024. Let's start with stories making headlines around the world of business. A recent report from the Nigeria Debt Management Office reveals that the nation's total debt has increased to 121.6 trillion naira. Uh, that's about $91.46 billion as of March 2024. This figure encompasses the combined domestic and external debt of the federal government of Nigeria and 36 state governments and the federal capital territory. This represents an increase of 24.3 trillion naira, uh, representing 24.9% when compared to 97.3 trillion naira in December 2023. The increase is driven majorly by Naira devaluation as the total debt was reduced in dollar terms by $16.7 billion, that's about 18.34%. A breakdown of the total debt shows that domestic and uh, debt component was 65.65 trillion Naira, and that uh, the external debt amounted to 56.02 trillion Naira, that's about 42.12 billion uh, US dollars. Now, moving on now, the federal government is taking, uh, tasking African countries to invest more in the training of small and medium enterprises to improve trade standardization and boost the continent's economy. This, is, the government says, is committed uh, to promoting education and technical standards as key drivers for enhancing intra-Africa trade. Speaking at the ongoing 30th General Assembly of the Africa's Organization of Standardization in Abuja, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Doris Uzoka Anite, emphasized the critical role of implementing standards in fostering sustainable development, innovation, and export oriented manufacturing, underscoring the vital link between education, sustainable development, industrialization, and trade. The minister, who was represented by the permanent secretary of the ministry, Mr. Nurorimi, said successful and sustainable exports depends on compliance with quality requirements of standards for goods and services based on globally recognized quality infrastructure. Nigeria's trade surplus with our uh, ECOWAS countries rose by a staggering 206% uh, year on year to 1.14 trillion naira in the first quarter of 2024. Well, this is according to the National Bureau of Statistics report. Analysis uh, of this uh, trade data for the first quarter in 2024, re released by the NBS, showed that exports to ECOWAS countries rose from 399.19 billion naira in the first quarter of 2023 to 1.25 trillion naira in the first quarter of 2024. Now, this significant increase in trade surplus is a testament to the country's growing economic influence in the region and its ability to capitalize on the opportunities presented by the ECOWAS trade agreement. Well, let's get talking now and being joined from Surulere Lagos here by the lead consultant, 3T Impex Consulting, Dr. Bamidele Ayemibo. He is also known as the Export Doctor, a renowned author, international business coach, keynote speaker, and international business development expert, outstanding AFCFTA ambassador, and the doyen of international trade and finance education in Africa. Dr. Ayemibo, it's been a while. Thank you so much for joining us on the program this afternoon. Thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, uh, not, not staying with that report, my first question. I want to ask you, uh, where are we with regards to exports? You've been following the trends, and we know what's been happening before now, but we're still not getting what is expected from that space. You know, as much as I know there are some constraints, where are we as at the positives? Uh, we're not moving as far as we should. Um, you know, some of those trade surplus you talked about, in my opinion, are like uh, a fluke. What I mean by a fluke is um, we can't see the effort of the government. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about active as effort of the government to be able to go on less. So I saw you talk about the debt that we are borrowing. 
we can actually make a lot of money from export. Just the way government is making money in food, oil, and gas, we can make money from export, which is why, you know, I was talking to someone recently, and I said the president need to give the ambassador a target. That look, you must have, your, one of your KPI is to double the volume of trade with the country we have sent you to. So we need more effort on the part of the government to be able to grow trade because of the potential we have to be able to grow trade. But as it is right now, not so much is happening in terms of initiative. I'm talking about new initiative of government that is out there and adding a lot of uh, value and um, results that we're getting. Because if you look at it very well, by the time you check second, third quarter, you most likely will not see the kind of trade surplus you are seeing right now. Because when the rain starts, exports slow down. Most of the time, we have more exports last quarter and fourth quarter. And the reason is because we do a lot of agri exports and solar mineral exports. And when there is no rain, harvest is done and people are able to mine. So if we begin to see that same increase in second and third quarter, we can say, okay, maybe we are seeing real increase in non oil export. But still right now, not much is happening in the sector. And by not much, I mean government-driven initiative. From the Nigerian Export Promotion Council to Ministry of Trade and Investment, they need to do something more serious as far as growing trading is concerned in Nigeria, including CBN and Nexin Bank, of course. I really want to agree with you because the last time I heard much about the Nigerian Export Promotion Council uh, was in the days of, uh, I think, before the present uh, CEO. And there's not been much happening uh, along that space. Yes. yes, the truth must be told. Uh, what's happening with regards to, there were some schemes at, at that time for funding, for trainings, uh, for maintaining standards, certification, uh, and all of this. Where are we with, with regards to all of this? You get what I'm saying now. You are getting my point now. So the effort, you know, I know NEPC does not have a lot of money, but you know, there is a way you come up with initiative, you come up with program, and make noise about it so that the people that need it can get to know about it. They do a couple of seminars, which um, is also good, but I'm not seeing those initiatives. Like you said, we are not seeing those initiatives. The last uh, administration had the issue on quality. They did a lot on quality, and I'm aware of it. I know people that benefited from it. Uh, and of course, don't you all what time we saw what they did with government supporting them and with the grant and the like. So we're not seeing, as I said, we're not seeing uh, effort being made, initiative, programs, policy that will be able to drive it. So I, I, I think that, and, and, and this, it's good you are talking about this. Maybe someone in presidency will get to hear about this and probably begin to ask questions and probably be able to call them to um, invite them to know exactly what the challenges and constraints are to be able to. So the media also need to do something about raising the bar about the noise we make as far as international trade is concerned. Yeah, of course, network challenges there, uh, trying to get Dr. Ayemibo back. Dr. Bamidele Ayemibo, are you back there? Well, serious a challenge there where the conversation was just getting very, uh, very interesting. Uh, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll see uh, if we can connect back with Mr. Uh, Dr. Ayemibo and continue this very important conversation this afternoon. Stay with us. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked, and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty, erected for a century of a century. Speaking 
advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Sometimes. All right, thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, and I am still talking to uh, Dr. Bamidele uh, Yemibo, uh, the export doctor. And I, I introduced him earlier. Yes, we, we, we lost contact, uh, I guess, due to the heavy downpour uh, out there. I don't know if it's the same in Surulere, but it's so heavy yes, uh, outside here. Uh, so you, you, you were making a point, and seriously, we lost at the point of uh, where you were talking uh, around... Um, the challenges and what the NEPC and like should be doing. Yes, I was talking about the fact that we need to see new initiative of NEPC from uh, including CBN, CBN, Next Green Bank, Federal Ministry of Trade and NEPC programs that will galvanize the private sector to queue behind that kind of initiative to be able to drive the growth of non export in Nigeria. We are not seeing that right now, and I think it's a big challenge. Uh, we are not likely going to get the kind of growth we want in the GDP and in export in particular if this is not done. Now, I, I sent you a report yesterday when we were trying to prepare for this conversation and the likes of yes. the, the, the DG of World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozi okonjo Wella, saying that Nigeria has kind of lost out in the agricultural export space. That's concerning to me. What do you make of it? Yes. That's concern. That's that, that's a big issue, really, because you know the issue is that, for example, cocoa. Nigeria is not doing a lot in cocoa because we are not investing in new crops, planting as much as we should. Now, start with the cocoa that was planted by I think it was um, uh, Donald Duke and the the person that comes after Donald Duke in Cross River. It's been possible to do more now in cocoa production than even the Southwest. Now, this was done more than 10 years ago. That's about most of the ones we're sitting in the Southwest are the ones that were done in the 70s and 60s because we are not investing a lot in the production of these three crops. So we need to bring, apart from the quality issue that we have also had, but the fact that we're not doing a lot of investment, I mean, government-driven investment, supporting the private sector, we have to drive a lot of investment in the sector, that is making our volume to go down, coupled with the quality issue we have. I agree completely with the DG of WTO, we are losing out, um, I mean, in the non-LS space, particularly as far as agro-commodity is concerned. But some analysts also on the other side are saying that food imports is not totally bad. Because Nigeria say we do a lot of imports. Maybe that's why we are shunning exports. Uh, I don't think so. I don't agree with that. If we can, we cannot ban food imports mm. when we are not producing enough for our consumption. The reason why smuggling is thriving, the reason why people will be able to smuggle rice and other food into Nigeria even when it is prohibited or banned or duty is high, is because there is demand. If there is enough production locally and we produce in such a manner that we have excess and the price drop, smuggling will become unnecessary because people will not people will have a loss after risking their life to be able to bring those into Nigeria. So I don't think the reason why we are we, we should stop this item and increase the price locally and make it difficult for people in this era of inflation. We need to first of all increase production locally before we can begin to do that. So we need to keep importing, and that's why the president also is reducing some of the duties and tariffs on this product so that we can reduce the impact of inflation and cost of living on the people. So I think what we need to do first is for us to say, okay, what are the products we want to export? I mean, products with high demand and large volume in the export market. And Nigeria have an advantage in the production and then support the production by giving land for the production, by providing funds for people to be able to farm those pro uh, pro produce that item and also create market for them to be able to ship outside the country. Hmm. Uh, when we look at this value chain thing, uh, you know, I always like us to also uh, 
to go down that chain and understand every aspect of it and how it affects us as a human. Uh, what do you think about value addition? Uh, that is something that everyone keeps talking about, that we have some of these uh, products, but we refuse to add value. Now that government is a bit opened to private sector participation and all of that, do you think the story might change at this time? No, this is something now. For if I go to really emphasize value addition in Nigeria, it has to be by policy. In last administration, they did something that I believe if this administration is doing is going to do it, if they do the same, we might be able to get people to be forced to add value. Giving incentive, more incentive in terms of grant to businesses that add value for export. Now, what that would do is that it will encourage people to want to add value because they know they will get grant and more grant because they are adding value to it. Because the truth is that even though we have the issue with, uh, in production in Nigeria, the fact is that businesses are still producing and businesses are still exporting those products that have been produced locally. And because the raw material are sourced locally, it's then possible to be able to export those products profitably. I export and I export value added products. I stopped exporting commodity for more than five years now. I export only value added products and they are profitable for export. And I'm not even a producer. Imagine if it's the producer that is exporting that product. You can see what will happen at the end of the day. If you look at the global market, for example, if I use cocoa, for example, as a case study, the global demand for cocoa in the world is just about 10, 11, 12, maybe mass 13 billion dollars. For chocolate alone, the demand for chocolate alone is over thirty billion dollars. The question we should be asking ourselves is: Who is making money from cocoa? Seventy-five percent of the production and export of cocoa is from West Africa, from Cote d'Ivoire to Ghana to Nigeria. But who are those enjoying the benefit of value addition? Germany, Switzerland, United States, Netherlands, United Kingdom, because they are the one producing the cocoa butter, the cocoa liquid, the, co the chocolate. And that one making all the money. So value addition is definitely the way to go. But the government must incentivize value addition by supporting with grants that will reduce the cost of production, which is what the administration was doing by CBN. And I think it's something we should consider doing this time around. Why do we still have rejections of Nigerian food, pro food, uh, food products? Why do we still have rejections? <laughs> Lack of export readiness. Lack of export readiness. One of the things the government needs to do is, if someone says it's coming into export, he needs to do export readiness evaluation to know where the gaps are in his knowledge and understanding and be trained to cover that gap before he starts. And I've been monitoring data for export from Nigeria since 2006, almost 20 years. There are businesses I knew in 2006 that are still exporting to today, but there are also no businesses who came in and left because they lost out and most of the issue is because they had issue with and, and they lost money. Now, but that could have been prevented if they have an understanding of what they are exporting and how to go about it. But there's something the government is doing now which is commendable. They are doing, there's something the government is doing now which I have advocated for many years. Number one, a product that is of low quality should not leave Nigeria. That will make us not to even have issue of rejection. Now government has started implementing it if you don't do some certification with the government agency locally from NAVDAC to federal produce to Nigeria Cultural Quarantine Service, your product will not be cleared for export by custom. Now, that started in February, and that has been strictly implemented. If we continue on that line, we're likely going to significantly reduce the issue of rejection. So if I buy low quality product, it gets to the port, quality has said, the quality is bad, they didn't allow it to go. I will return it to the person I buy it from, and I will not go to him to buy it again. Now, if the person knew people are not buying my product because of quality, he will be forced to ensure he does what is necessary to uh, to, to show the quality of the item of export. So you see that if we went back to the farm gate, because nobody is going to buy your product if the quality is bad, because they will not be able to export it. But by a, in a situation where they are able to export it, the person will say, ah, you are rejecting my product. Someone else will buy if nobody is buying, he will be forced to adjust the, whatever way he's doing, in, uh, particularly in the post harvest handling, to be able to ensure the quality of what is being for your export is of the right quality. Mm. Uh, this really sounds uh, so interesting. Well, uh, almost finally, uh, let's look at uh, 
the AFCFTA here again. I, I remember uh, in, in South Africa, at the IATF, the commitment from African countries and all of that. But some experts, again, in this space are saying Nigeria might not get the potentials or the positives of the AFCFTA, considering our economic challenge at this time. Dr. Ayemibo, how does this come to you? <laughs> I don't agree with that. I feel the government should just... That, now, the same issue I talk about, about this agency of government, I think the presidents need to put under some pressure to perform. I think if we if those agency get it right, we will be able to get AFCFTA right. Some countries are already trained under AFCFTA. Nigeria have not even shown us how we are going to obtain a certificate of origin to be able to trade under AFCFTA. And some other countries are doing it. Ghana is doing it. Kenya is doing it. Why are we not doing it? It's the same issue. The fact that we don't just seem to be taking non-oil export very, very seriously. We need to take it seriously. Like I said, we are not talking about debt. We can we can export commodity to Africa. There's a limit to kind of commodity we can export to Africa. If we are going to trade in Africa, we have to trade finished goods. Yeah, we are currently trading with West Africa from pesticides to food items, to processed food items, to uh, footwear. These are different products that Nigeria is currently exporting to West African countries. And we can do the same under AFCFTA because it must be value addition product that we will try in the AFCFTA. We, many African countries are worse than Nigeria, so they cannot even buy commodities because they can't process it. We need to export value added. So we are going to have a lot of job creation when we take AFCFTA serious because even our product, even though it might be expensive, of cost of production, we are still profitable in AFCFTA, I mean Africa, in export. Why? Because... We are producing here and adding value here and the number of raw materials are sourced even in Nigeria. So we need to take AFCFT seriously. As it is right now, we still are not. I can't see any trash. I mean, the industry, I can't see any effort being made from the National Action Committee on AFCFT to Nigeria to Commission Council, Mental Ministry of Trade. We really cannot see much being done for AFCFT right now. I don't know if anything is done in the world or at the background. The Guided Trade Initiative by the uh, AFC Secretariat. To get African funds to begin to, you know, like uh, like uh, uh, learning the, uh, the, the the little step, little baby step taken by different countries to learn how to work on the AFCFT has started. We have not started. I'm hoping we will start very soon, but we are still waiting for that. So, what is your outlook for the year as things play out, despite the global issues and all that we face? Maybe uh, we Q1 look nice. I don't expect that to happen in Q2 and Q3. And mm. I've told you the reason why Q2 and Q3 are generally lower. The cost of the rain, the cost of mine activity slow down, people are planting. So I expect that it will pick up later in the year. But we need to do the farming right. Because also now we have a lot of issues with farming in Nigeria right now that is making our food item to go up. And this cost of production might also impact on commodity exports and of course impact on even value addition exports, if it continues like this, because if the inflation is going on terms, we might have challenge for the later part of the year export that usually should be off because the rainy season will have been over. I must thank you so much, Dr. Bamidele Ayemibo, for your, oh, of course, interesting and intelligent uh, comments on this very important uh, issue. We, we appreciate uh, your support uh, on this. Uh, talking about the lead consultant, 3T Impex Consulting, renowned auto international business coach. Do enjoy your weekend and enjoy the rainy afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me and bye-bye. <laughs> All right, then coming up on the show, we shift to talk about debt. Nigeria's economy, public debt, rises to uh, by 24.3 trillion naira. In three months, managing director, chief business officer, Optimus, by Afri Invest, Mr. Ayodeji Ebo, joins me after this break to continue this conversation. This is Business Nigeria with Tolu Lope, Ogunjobi.